I am transformed and transfixed because of the beautiful music that has been given. I could not but think of the words of Augustine in describing such an event. He said that music is the art of controlling sounds properly. Not in a manner that is necessarily technically correct, but in a manner that satisfies the moral sense. And so I'm on my way to heaven this morning. My spirit is fed. My moral sense is in a resting mode. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is not only the finisher of our faith, but who is finishing our faith through his limited mercies and through the mystery and the ministerium of his grace. Some weeks ago, I had to travel to Austin, Texas and rent a car. And as I got into the car and put the key in the ignition, turning on the engine, there was a flash in the dashboard. There were lights, there were vibrant shimmering lights, colors of orange, green and yellow. But there was a particular color that struck my attention and it was the red light, the engine light, the light that would remind me when I need an oil check or an oil change. And so when I consider the text this morning, I am wondering who this David is. David, the son of Jesse, is a poet, a musician, a sweet singer in Zion, a scholar who received this education at the University of Sheep Keeping. When I think of this text, David is seeing a portrait. And down at the base of this portrait, there are people walking on an ascending road towards Jerusalem, the epicenter of worship and praise. But in the background, we see people coming towards this road as they're snaking their way towards the Jerusalem road. The interesting thing that was happening, they are singing, there is laughter. In some cases, there is dance. Considering that these tribes were not always kind to each other, David is so amazed that he coins these words, how good and how pleasant it is when men dwell together 
in unity. It is like the oil running down. It is like the oil being poured on the head. It is like the oil running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, the first priest that came down the collar and the skirts of his garments, consecrating the whole body. Perhaps if David were here, he might just think that an oil change may be on the horizon for these tribes who don't usually get together or get along. But I would hasten to say to you this morning that this is no ordinary oil. Certainly this is not cooking oil to keep the eggs from sticking to the skillet. This is not W240 oil to silence the screeching of metal against metal of a wagon train. And ladies, this is certainly not oil of Olay, the oil that slides down the body and disparages white ash that finds its presence because of the hard water we experience here in Southern California. But this oil has three very, very important characteristics. This oil was a precious oil. It was an oil that represented the presence of God's Holy Spirit. It is an anointing oil of those who are called by God for his service. This oil anticipates the baptism of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who would be anointed by baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not only is this a precious oil, it is a fragranced oil. It is an oil that is peppered with myrrh and cinnamon and calamus and acacia. But this is also a poured oil. I was struck by this idea that the oil was poured. Immediately when I thought of it being a poured oil, I thought of an oil that is intentionally directed to a particular space. And when that oil leaves its receptacle, a stream is formed to the designated place of where the oil is going. This oil has flow. But the opposite of a poured oil is the oil spill. When I considered the oil spill, the character of the oil spill, uh, I found to be um, an oil that is misdirected. It is, an, it is an oil that splits off from the body and leaves the receptacle. It is unintentional. This oil runs on its own, goes where it wants to go, falls where it wants to fall, flows where it wants to flow. I could not help but think, ladies and gentlemen, that today in our world we have an oil spill. There is an oil spill in our land. It is an oil that mutilates and violates the terrain of unity and togetherness. It is an uncommon oil. It is an unworthy oil. It is a crude oil that is not refined. This oil projects the chilling effect of fear and distrust among 
a community of people who really just want to live together in harmony. This oil has a pungent odor. One of the pungent odors is something called partisan politics, where the end justifies the means. This is an oil that mutilates and violates. It is an oil that is built on ideology and that seems to disparage morality. The other pungent odor is an oil that smells of discrimination against differences, where the goal is for everyone to walk in lockstep for the good of those in control. This is an oil that mutilates and violates. And then there is the oil of tribal and primal misbehavior where we default to strife and envy, selfishness, ambitions, dissensions, and outburst. This is an oil that mutilates and violates. The Apostle Paul agrees with this when he reminds us that the carnal mind is at enmity with God. The carnal mind is death, but the spiritual mind is life. So the question then, how do we get an oil change? There's a property in oil called viscous. Viscous. Uh, viscous is a property that resists anything that would try to separate the ingredients that make oil what it is. If there is a culture that wants to separate the ingredients of oil, viscous meets it at the door. I would suggest to you, my friends, that we need, as a society, an oil change. Jesus would say, if you want an oil change, to ask. And it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock, and it would be open to you. How pleasant it is when men dwell together in unity. It is like the oil, the precious oil. It is like the fragrance oil. It is like the oil that is poured and not spilled. Dr. K, a theo, uh, theologian, a scholar, has three suggestions for those of us that want an oil change. He says that an oil change looks like association, and I quote him, we must come together because there can be no unity in solitariness or being alone. We are many members but one body. Association condemns all separatism for separatism's sake. And then there is variety. There is a unity in the mere repetition of the same things as a heap of sand or a flock of sheep. 
but unity, unity requires harmonized varieties. Music is not a monotone, he says, but it is harmony. In a true Christian society, there must be variety of thought, variety of feeling, variety of opinion, variety of age, variety of position and character. Finally, he says, there must be liberty. There is no unity where there is no freedom. There is no real agreement, or rather no real agreement exists where none is allowed to disagree. Again, I would say to you, we need an oil change. We need the daily moment by moment pouring out of God's Holy Spirit. Again, we get it by asking. We get it by seeking. We get it by knocking. What does this oil look like or smell like or feel like when we have a change? When we have the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit in unity, we will experience the myrrh of love mixed with the sweet cinnamon of gentleness and the sweet calamus of meekness mixed with the sweet cassia of long suffering. There's an old African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. How good and how pleasant it is when men and women, old people and young people, Boys and girls dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil that is poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down as Aaron's beard on the collar of his robe. That is an oil change. And so, my friends, as we go through this coming week, take time to smell the myrrh of love. Take time to inhale the sweet cinnamon of gentleness. Inhale the sweet calamus of meekness. Take time to inhale the cassia of long suffering. And be sure, moment by moment, as you turn the key in the morning of your waking, in the, in the consciousness of your self-awareness, as you watch the dashboard flash with the lights in your consciousness, be sure to know that your oil will be changed if it is poured on you by the Holy Spirit. May God richly bless you.